Hi! In today's video we're going to be talking about piecewise functions. Now most of the functions you've seen up to now are either quadratics, you know, in which case it's a parabola, a linear function or an arithmetic function, in which case your graph is a straight line, or an exponential function, in which case your graph is an exponential curve. Notice those two are not the same, just to emphasize that. But now you can run into functions that look like this, which are not quadratics, they're not an exponential curve, and they're not just one line going on forever in either direction. This is three lines put together at different points. To, do, to work with these functions, we have to create what are called piecewise functions. It's called piecewise because it's a function that's literally in pieces. Now, to write a piecewise function, you need to list your equations for each part of the function. So in this case, we should have three equations because we have three different parts of our function. And then you'll also list the domains of your function. In other words, where each equation controls your graph. These are listed as inequalities. So maybe uh, negative 4 is less than x, and from 10 is less than x, which is less than 50, and so on and so forth. There are lots of different ways that these can be written, and you'll see an example of that here in just a bit. But before we go into writing a piecewise equation, or a piecewise function, uh, some of the background knowledge we're going to need is the use of point-slope form. Now point-slope form is just a way to write the equation of any straight line. And it says that given a slope of m and a point on the line, we'll call that point x1, x sub 1, comma y sub 1, we can write the equation of the line as y equals our slope m parentheses or times our variable x minus the x coordinate of our point so x sub 1 plus the y coordinate of our point y sub 1 now this x and this y will never change the only things that need to change in this equation are your slope your x sub 1 and your y sub 1 so let's look at, it, at an example so the example we'll look at today has three different pieces to it, which means our piecewise function will have three equations and three domains. So the first thing I need for my point-slope form here is a slope. So from one point to the next, I go over one, positive one, and then down two, negative two. That's a rise of negative two and a run of one. Now you could also go from the starting point to the ending point of this line, in which case you'd have a run of 1, 2, plus 3, and a rise of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6. Negative 6 over 3 is still negative 2. So our equation for this line will be negative 2, parenthesis. Now, I want my x value, my x variable. It won't change. And now I'm just going to take this first point in my graph. I know it's a part of my, gra my function here, and so I will use it as my x1, comma y1. So the x-coordinate is negative 6 x minus negative 6. And then my y coordinate is 4, so plus 4. Now that simplifies down to be negative 2 times x plus 6 plus 4. If you want, you can put that into slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, by distributing the negative 2 there. But I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to leave that as is. 
Now the next thing we need to mention is what part of my overall graph this function controls. It controls my graph from that point to that point. And we're going to talk about that in terms of the x values. That way we can talk about domain. So it controls it from negative 6 to negative 3. In other words, all x values greater than or equal to 6, but less than or equal to negative 3. Sorry, greater than or equal to negative 6. And this will be the piece that we will need later on. We can do the same thing for these next two segments. This segment has a run of 2, 3, 4, 5, and a rise of 4. So it's got a slope of, fi of 4 over 5. And again, I'll just go ahead and use this first coordinate. x minus my x coordinate, negative 3 plus my y-coordinate, negative 2, and I'm done. Now I will simplify this a little bit. x plus 3 minus 2. And now I just need to list my domain. Again, go from your starting point to your ending point for this section. You start at negative 3, and you end at positive 2, or all x values greater than negative 3 and less than or equal to positive 2. Notice I only take greater than here and that's because I don't want to catch it again. I don't want two x values of negative 3 that I could plug in for a function. Lastly, this last segment is a horizontal line at y equals 2. But if you needed the slope, it's a rise of 0 and a run of 4. 0 over 4. And then your x-coordinate is 2. Plus your y-coordinate was also 2. And now we do a little bit of simplification. I don't know where that parenthesis came from. 0 divided by 4 is 0. And 0 times anything is also 0. So this simplifies down to just y equals 2. Now we just need to put these... Oh, I forgot my domain. This equation is for the segment that goes from 2 to 6. Again, I almost caught my 2 there twice. Again, we don't want to have equal to 2 more than once, less than or equal to 6. Okay, This says that my equation goes from 2 to 6. And now I just need to put it all together in my piecewise notation. So f of x equals a nice little bracket to catch all of my equations, and I'll just list them off. From left to right, negative 2 times x plus 6 plus 4, 4 fifths, x plus 3 minus 2, and f of x equal to 2. And then I just need to list off my domains for each piece. So this con equation controls my graph from negative 6 to negative 3. This equation controls it from negative 3 to positive 2. Oop, again, I caught my negative 3 there twice. Make sure you don't have less than or equal to uh, 3 along with greater than or equal to 3. And my last one, 2 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 6. And that's how you make a piecewise function from a graph. So, just to recap, you'll most likely want to write your equation in point-slope form. You need to find the equation for each piece of your graph, and find out where that equation controls your graph, 
written in an inequality. And then lastly, list them all together in one nice function. And that's how you make a piecewise function. Thanks for watching.